What's up, everybody? This is Gina Ifoe, the one and only African superstar. Big shout outs to, first of all, the customers of theafricansuperstar.com. While we wait for people to join us in the building, let's have a brief message from our sponsors. What's up, everybody? Hello, Cassandra, the first in the chat room. Make sure you guys like the stream. Big shout outs also to our members only who are designated by the circle next to their name and also the lovers of the African Superstar Music Project. Yes, we are still pushing forward <laughs> uh, towards the release of my new music video, Come Chill With Me, and that will happen at 3,000 subscribers. So just waiting on the family to get on code. I want to talk about this topic today, which is when you are estranged, then it's time to reconnect. One of the very redundant issues that I hear from um, many Black people, you know, in the diaspora all over the world, um, children of migrants, et cetera, et cetera, is them not knowing where they come from them not knowing their history, them not knowing their origins, and so on and so forth. And when people don't know where they come from, it creates a huge vacuum in their life because, you know, that is a very foundational thing for you to be able to move forward in life. You need to know your starting point. And if you don't know your starting point, a lot of times what happens is people spend unnecessary time um, trying to decipher and figure this out. And, you know, I had a great conversation with one of our African superstar family members here in the UK today. And we talked about how, you know, when you look at the diaspora, for instance, many of them are so removed from their origins, they have begun to believe any and everything about who they are, how they should live, their outlook. We see many people have begun to kind of assimilate to their new locations, which is, you know, completely new, you know, understandable. And it, it would happen to anyone because environmental and external forces can be very, very influential. I think for those of us that, you know, are part of the diaspora, and have these questions, you know, it's time to reconnect. Do you guys realize that we could very easily solve a lot of this, I don't know where I come from stuff. <laughs> I don't know what the continent is like. You know, what are continental Africans like? Will they like me? Will I be welcome? Are African nations safe? You know, by reconnecting ourselves and teaching ourselves what is important for us to know. You know, we have learned a lot of erroneous information, in my opinion. We have learned a lot of things that doesn't even pertain to us. Hello. And we have, you know, our history and things that would help our community flourish and things that would actually empower us and our children and the next generations. All these things have been omitted from us. It's kind of our responsibility if we want to change uh, the situation to attack it at the root. And I believe that educating and starting with the young people is critical. You know, do you realize that for instance, many generations of Black people in America, you know, this is definitely their story. A lot of them, they don't know their origins. A lot of them don't have, you know, um, genealogy information and stuff like that, unfortunately, you know. And again, it creates this void. It creates this vacuum. Some of them have even gotten to the point where they're like, I'm not, I don't come from Africa. 
You know, um, I don't have any connection to Africa. I'm American. We see the same thing happen here in the UK. You know, Jamaican families migrate here and then their children are suddenly black British. Hello, how does that happen? How does that happen, guys? If you take a watermelon from Bermuda and take it to Japan, is it no more a watermelon? So now it's an orange. <laughs> and I believe that a lot of this comes from obviously us, you know, wanting to be estranged from what we perceive is something negative, something that's not beautiful, something that's not positive. And the reality is that, you know, the origins, our origins across the continent are extraordinary. It's actually the cradle, the beginning of civilization is in the continent. You know, our people are diverse, they're innovative, they're beautiful. You know, we have so many historic contributions that we don't know about. So many incredible um, landmarks on the continent. So extremely scenic. You know, there are world phenomenons and wonders that are located on the continent that are nowhere else in the world. But you see, we don't know these things. And so there's a huge question mark and a negative perception about our origins, our people, and so on and so forth. If you are estranged, it's time to reconnect. The time that you keep on talking about how you are estranged, how you're far removed, how you don't know, and how you're, you're unsure, is all time that would be better spent making yourself um, a subject matter expert. You know, there was a time back in the days. Big shout out to Debbie. Big shout out to African Superstar family. Is anybody else in the chat room or do I just have to? Huh? Did you like the stream? Pause. I'll give you a minute. Go ahead. Let's be on code, guys. I know you may have forgotten how I do my live streams. Please like the video. Please greet me in the chat room if you're alive because I don't like spectators. This is a live show. Um, if I just wanted you to watch it, I would just post it up <laughs> without being live. OK, so once upon a time, back in the days, um, you know, I would watch Dinah Samir. Dinah Samir is one of the first, you know, search for Hulu channel. Um, I was watching that before I took my very first trip to the continent. And I will be watching Dinah in Kenya, Tanzania. He went to South Africa. He was in Nigeria. And I was like, man, I felt pressure. I was like, look at this guy, you know. Uh, vastly traveling the continent. And obviously, since I've been on social media, since before social media, big shout out to Alex, representing from Sierra Leone. Big shout outs to you, brother. I see you there. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I've been, I, I was named by my friends and associates, the African superstar. And I personally felt some type of way of having such a name. I felt that that meant that I should have a connotation of the continent, you know? And I can attribute, I'd say part of it was definitely motivated by Dinah Samir because I, I felt, well, if he's out there doing it, you know, and if I'm the kind of person that I say that I am, I also need to have a command of the continent. I can't just be living in America singing the praises of Africa, promoting people to go there if I'm not also doing it, you see? And the more I begin to explore the continent, the more I've realized that, you know, I was able to personally debunk a lot of misinformation and I was able to create my own connection and my own ties to the continent, make friends, make associations, be familiar with, um, you know, the names and regions of certain countries and cities you know, familiarize yourself with uh, the languages, some of the culture, some of the food, you know, and it removes a huge question mark in your head because now you actually have tangible connections and tangible examples of what it's like. You know, when I talk about what South Africa is like, I'm not piggybacking on the back of anyone else. Okay. I'm speaking from personal experience of the time that I spent in South Africa. When I tell people what it's like to go to Ghana, your live in Ghana. When I tell people, you know, my experiences in Kenya and Nigeria and Egypt and Tanzania, all these things are places that I've physically and actually been. 
you know? And the more I travel the continent and see the beauty and see the rich culture and see the history, the more proud I become to see the contributions of my people in different shapes and sizes, guys, you know? And I would say that this message goes out to the diaspora because at a certain point, you know, the more removed we get from our root and understanding who we are as people, um, the more confusing that it gets. And I think sometimes going back to, you know, the, the, the original way that things were done, the original understanding, of course, the motherland, it creates so much depth in your life. It makes things so much simplified. You know, problems that I experienced for decades living in the West, such as cold weather. You know, I was I was talking to my girlfriend Eunice today. Big shout outs to her. Big shout outs to my nephew, Z. Love you guys. But I was talking to her today and, and you know, we were talking about how we don't like cold weather. And I've absolutely never, ever, ever liked cold weather in Ohio. Now, if you talk to my mom, who is a Bermudian, you know, now living in America, she talks about how she enjoys the seasons and she will, she likes watching the uh, leaves change colors and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, she enjoys that whole thing. Me, I like it straight hot, drop it like it's hot all the time. Even, um, you know, Ghana being in rainy season, we've had quite a long rainy season this year in Ghana. It was pretty, you know, cooler in Ghana before I traveled, I'd say. Our average from the time that I've been living there is usually about 30 degrees Celsius, you know, consistently for months. And it had been roughly around 24, 26 before I left. And I've been checking the weather throughout my trip. And it's, you know, it's still been that. Um, and, and that's cold for me. Yeah. And now here in the UK, the temperature has been dropping <laughs> to like 11, 12. And I'm like, yeah, I don't like cold weather. You see, by relocating to the continent, I was able to tap into a place that provides me the type of climate that I love and that I need. Hello. You know, I also have always felt like a fish out of water being considered a minority and living in minority settings. You know, I've always looked for um, my community. I've always looked for my, you know, as we say in Ghana, one corner, big shout outs to my Ghana foe. I've always been looking for that. You know, I absolutely love living among other people that look like me where I'm the standard. I don't have to explain, you know, myself. I have the benefit of just existing, you know, not being a black woman, but being a woman, you know, again, the, the community provides it, you know, being able to, to socialize and fraternize and make relationships with my people, Ghana provides it, you know, a vibrant social life, have access to beaches. I mean, you know, I get so many of my needs ticked off by being in the, on the continent that honestly will not, will never have been fulfilled, you know, in the West, it just can't be provided, you know? Um, and I think that taking the initiative, like I said, to re-acclimate yourself. Of course, as someone born and raised in the West, you know, you will never be 100% indigenous to the continent, you know, even with all of your wishes, even with all your desire to be able to do it, you won't. You know, you've, you've been grown and socialized in a different country and that's gonna stick with you. You know, like for instance, I don't think I would ever be able to get rid of this American accent. You know, I mean, it's how I learned how to speak, you know, the diction, the pronunciation, all of that stuff, it comes from America. I'm not going to be able to change it, you know. Um, other exposures, your taste, your preferences, certain things you're not gonna be able to change, but I can guarantee you this. Um, if you begin to, you know, connect elsewhere, you know, get plugged in and start educating yourself. You can have an alternative to the lifestyle that you're living if you're not happy with it. 
you know, and I would say this goes out to those of you guys that are just so like on the fence, you know, something's calling you to the continent, perhaps, um, but you're very nervous and you're very unsure, you know, and, you know, it's uncomfortable when maybe you're sitting around people and they're speaking in a foreign language and you, you know, you just like, don't know, you know, but the irony is, Big shout outs. Hey guys, is anybody else here? Hi. I mean, I mean, I, I know I'm pretty to look at. Hi. Family. What's up? The thing is that as you reconnect yourself, you know, and, and, and the beauty is as well, guys, the beauty is that we really have the ability to pick and choose our flavor. You know, um, we don't have to be any particular place, you know. So let's say I know some have done DNA tests um, and that may reconnect you to a, a particular people or tribe or something like that. But maybe you travel, you know, and then you figure, you know, I love Ethiopia. I know we have some people, some Ethiopian viewers. I know we have some people that have migrated to Ethiopia on the channel. So you get to Ethiopia and you're like, yeah, this is my vibe. This is my flavor. You know, we have Matrell in a mission out in Egypt. She loves that Egyptian vibe. You know, we have those of us in West Africa, people in Nigeria, people in Ghana, people in Senegal. You have the ability to kind of choose whatever flavor you're feeling and then start the transition then and there. And the beauty is, you know, Big shout out. Debbie says, I don't mind being a foreigner to broaden my horizons, experience new environments. Big shout out to Debbie. Hey, what's up, Antonio? I see you. What's up? You're in Ghana. Safe travels. Big shout outs to you as well. Good to see you. Um, we have that liberty, you know, of being able to, to re-cement ourselves. And then, you know, if as we create the generations on the continent, that whole concept of I don't know where I come from and, you know, I don't fit in and, you know, whatever, that's going to be gone because we are going to be integrated into our homeland. And the difference is no matter how many generations we create in these Western worlds, unfortunately, we are never seen as indigenous. You know, uh, we're never seen as, you know, a blue-blooded American or a blue-blooded British or a blue-blooded uh, German. You know, we're always considered to be an immigrant. You know, however, um, you know, somebody born and raised on the continent is never going to be told they're not from the continent. You know, they're never going to be told by a, a, a fellow Ghanaian or a Nigerian or a Tanzanian or Angolan. Hey, you're not real. You're not a real legit. I mean, if they grow up there, speak the language and it's culturally sound, they're in. So it's just that simple for us to begin the process to find out who we are and reconnect and understand our origins, guys. And I mean, realistically, if you're a person like me, you like statistics, you know, you're a critical thinker, you just look at the data as it is, okay? Our probabilities are legit better on the continent. You know, we can have more for our money. We can eat better food. We can live in a better climate. You know, we know that um, colder climates and stuff, they can impact your mental well-being. A lack of vitamin D can lead to health conditions. You know, I even have a skin condition um, that began with the deficiency of vitamin D. You know, so overall, our quality of life, we have the potential to have an amazing quality of life on the continent. Obviously, yes, it does take some innovation as it stands. You know, the pioneers need to be mature about their journey and understand it. Yes. Yes. Being a pioneer is not a fantasy. You know, some people think that it's all roses. Some people think, oh, when it comes to the continent, it's just going to be like, oh, you know, I don't know, like coming to America, you know, the, the movie or whatever. 
In reality, it's not like that. In reality, you have cultural differences. You have politics in the nation that you are uh, moving into. You have tribalism. You have a uh, language barrier, you know, different foods. You have a lot of stuff. You don't know the demographics. You don't know the history. It's a lot. But counting up the cost and understanding what type of journey you're embarking on and also why we're doing it. We're doing it so that our future generations will not have to go through some of the things we're going through. Okay. We're doing it to empower our people. We're doing it to you know, put our money where our mouth is and so on and so forth. You've got to be mature in this transition. If you think that it's a game and a fantasy world and a Disney movie, then you're not going to be successful, period. You know, I want to encourage my people to reconnect. You know, if you are... (laughs) You know, uh, children of migrants, you know, this is something that um, we have to deal with. You know, we have to deal with the duality of our parents or our families versus the new environment that we're raised in, you know, and really being a fish out of water on either side, you know, being unfamiliar with perhaps our origins but being ostracized in the place where we live or a second class citizen or never fully recognized as, you know, um, a product of that environment. So in my opinion, this is just my opinion. Um, if a watermelon is a watermelon, no matter where they are, you know, or if an African is an African, no matter where they are, if you're in the Caribbean, if you're in Europe, if you're on the continent, if you're in America, if you're in Asia, you see, they see us all the same. Now we recognize, yeah, you know, culturally we're different and so on and so forth. But in my opinion, it makes more sense, you know, to assimilate with the root and then a completely different dynamic in which we know that we're never fully going to be able to be absorbed in. You know, one of the reasons that um, I love Ghana, you know, and I, I am so connected with Ghana is because Ghana loves me. You know, back in the days, people would say to me, oh, are you Ewe? You know, which is one of the tribes in Ghana, they come from the Volta region. Um, and apparently, you know, I've not visited the Volta region currently, but apparently I look like an Awe person. And I thought it was really interesting because in addition, you know, usually people can never really guess my ethnic backgrounds, you know, it gets complicated. <laughs> But with the Ghanaian people, it was like, oh, yeah, she's one of ours. You know, that's kind of how I took it. Um, They embraced me. They welcomed me. I mean, they have been integral in my move to the continent and just my world travels in general. And it's amazing, you know, to be received by a people that you were not born and raised in that nation where the place where you were born and raised is rejecting you and not treating you like a citizen. And this is why I promote our people to reconnect. You know, uh, my transition to the continent has been relatively smooth, but I attribute that to the fact that I've had an open mind and I've been resilient. You know, at this point, I mean, it's the only option, (laughs) you know, I'm most happiest uh, when I'm in Ghana or even traveling to Ghana. When I realize that I'm getting ready to travel to Ghana, you know, which my very first trip was in 2016. I still have the same vigor and excitement. I can't sleep at night. You know, once I buy that ticket to Ghana, I can't relax until I've boarded the flight to Ghana. Every time I board the flight to Ghana, I take a deep breath. You know, my relaxation is on another level. It truly is my solace solace and my refuge. And I'm so grateful to know the place that provides that. You know, and I took the initiative to create a reconnection in a place 
that I was not born and raised. You know, and the beauty is you can determine how, you know, deep you want it to be. You know, if you want to like get as native as you possibly can, you can do that. If you want to be moderate or, you know, minimal, you can do it to your standards. You know, I would say I'm moderate. I would say that I'm not as, you know, going as hard as I possibly could, but I'm very, very proud of the progress that I have already made. And I know that let's say within the next decade, um, you know, the position I'll be in, in 10 years with my uh, reconnection to Ghana will be remarkable. You know, I mean, people already say that I'm, that I'm, you know, got me. They, they already feel like when they talk to me or when they are in my company or whatever, um, my knowledge and understanding, you know, a little bit of the language I know, you know, so on and so forth. Um, so this is what I want to talk about today. I, I always promote our people to begin to solve our own problems. You know, we can't wait for anybody else to innovate solutions to our own problems. When things have gotten distorted in your life, okay, and you no longer know which way is up and down, left or right, you can't decipher. Go back to the root. Go back to the root. Sometimes you have plans, you have blueprints, you have uh, dreams or projects, and they don't work out. Go back. Okay, to the root, go back to the original blueprint. Maybe you revise, maybe you change the time frame, maybe you add additional resources. You know what I mean? Go back to the beginning. If for those of you that have already began your transition to the constant and you're going through a lot of ups and downs, a lot of problems and confusions, you're asking yourself, are you making the right decision? Go back to the root and decipher why you made this decision. You know, those of us that made the decision to go to the continent, we did it because nine, you know, most of us were under duress in the West. You know, stagnant in our lives, our careers, unhappy uh, with, you know, perhaps what was going on with our children, safety, you know, racism. At the period of time that many of us made the decision, we were so unhappy wherever we were coming from, you know, miserable and stressed and depressed and, you know, just feeling like, come on, you know, we get to the continent, we start going through some ups and downs and we start questioning it all. Regularly go back to the root cause. You know, that's my advice to you. Um, you feel disconnected from your people. You feel like, you know, you don't know. I, I spoke to someone um, earlier this week who his grandfather is a Nigerian, but he's born and raised here in England. And he said, you know, he feels very out of place in Nigeria, you know, unfortunately. Big shout out to Black Beauty always. I see you there. What's up, family? Please make sure you like the stream. Hello. If you're in the building, let me see you. We only got a couple of y'all. I don't know why everybody's so shy. But at least you can like the video. You can also support the stream. What's up, family? So I spoke to this, you know, young uh, Nigerian British dude. And he was saying, you know, when he goes to Nigeria, he feels so out of place. You know, they're speaking um, the language and he just feels like he doesn't know what's up. And obviously at first, you know, you you may go through that. I mean, obviously the, the more ignorant you are, to your origins, for instance, or a certain environments, you, you will feel uncomfortable, you know, but again, the more you strengthen those ties, the day is going to come where you're going to walk in the room and you're going to feel comfortable. You're going to understand what they're talking about. You're going to be able to jump in the conversation or recognize the music at the party. You're going to, you know, crave certain foods that, you know, you, you were not familiar eating and things like that, but it comes from you fortifying and creating those ties to the continent. You know, um, I, I personally believe 
that a lot of our people in the West are very estranged from their root and it causes them so much confusion and happiness in their life because they're letting other people define them and they're letting other people, you know, influence how they see themselves. When I look at the version of me from the continent versus the version of me from the West, the version of me from the continent is extraordinary. You know, sometimes I look at my brand and it blows my mind, definitely with my music project. You know, when I watch my music videos, when I listen to my music, uh, when I see my performances and things, it is mind boggling to me that this component was inside of me, but I never had any time to entertain it in the West because I was busy doing erroneous, extraneous things, occupying all my time. And I never had an opportunity to let this side of myself flourish. But when I came to the continent, I was relaxed. I was stress free. I was rested, you know, enough to let my mind and creativity just spin and blossom and bring out new talents that I never realized. You know, and I've made amazing friends on the continent. I've made amazing friends through this channel. You know, people that I know I would not have otherwise met and they are a huge blessing to my life. You know, I have amazing people around me right now. Probably I would say people that I've been wanting around me for my whole life I have around me right now. And it's amazing. And guess what? <laughs> We're like minded. You know, um, we have similar perspectives. We have similar outlooks. We have great friendships and relationships, you know, that are reciprocal. You guys know that's a big thing for me. And it's, it's, it's amazing. And I just attribute all these things, you know, to me reconnecting myself with my root. And these being, you know, rewards and benefits of doing that. You know, I can't imagine my life without the African component. I can't imagine uh, my life without Ghana. You know, um, I can't. You know, it's like a beacon of hope for me. And albeit there's a lot of nonsense, a lot of nonsense, you know, because of the brainwashing and, and the misdirection of so many of our people, but still. You know, those of you that are genuine and those of you that are like minded make it so special for me. And the fact that we connect it, you know, even though that we're minorities among our people and in the world, <laughs> we've somehow come into a communal space. And I, I just think that it's phenomenal. So I hope that this message was well received. I see that you guys were just captivated by my live stream today. Because um, I only had a handful of you in the chat room. I don't know. I don't know. I understand. You know, I don't know. Is it my fro? Huh? <laughs> Is it my sexy uh, dashiki house dress? I don't know. I don't know. Well, anyway, family, that's what I want to talk to you about today. Please make sure you sub to the channel. I want to drop the new video. The new video is here. It's ready to premiere. Come chill with me. I know y'all going to love it. Um, me and the model of that video was were hot in the video. You know, he's hot, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm ready to show it to the world. So big shout outs to the African superstar family. Until we meet again, stay black and true. If you ain't black, just stay true.